I started a couple weeks ago. We're, we're still talking about faith. We've been talking about it all year long. But I went into a, a specific division a couple weeks ago uh, talking about seed faith giving. So we're going to finish that up on tonight, uh, the force and power of seed faith giving. Now, uh, this is really a vital and necessary key uh, w even when it comes to living by faith. And I've learned over the years that really, you can't really walk in faith, let alone have strong faith, without, um, without being a giver. Now I'm going to go into why I'm saying that. You, you can't really live your life by faith or even really even have strong faith and not be a giver. And I say that because we know that faith is of the heart. You know, man believeth with the heart. But giving is also a locator of the heart. Amen. So faith is of the heart, and giving is a locator of the heart. And one of the best biblical examples of that is when this uh, rich young ruler had a, what I call a defining moment with Jesus. Let's go there. Let's go to the 10th chapter of Mark. The 10th chapter of Mark. And let's read verse 17. It says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. And then Jesus, beholding him, uh, loved him and said unto him, But one thing that thou lackest, Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and then come and take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved because he had had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, this is why I say this story, uh, uh, this is why I say it gives the example of uh, we know faith is of the heart, but giving locates the heart. Now, this, this young guy, he was grieved because he couldn't give where his heart wasn't. Now, we're not saying this was not a good guy. You know, because he, he, he's saying, uh, Jesus told him, listen, you, you know the commandments. And he said, listen, I've observed that since my youth. You know, so that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty good moral character. But Jesus said, this is one thing you lack it. And it, was not, it wasn't about the money. Jesus, Jesus knew his heart wasn't where it should be. You know. So it says that this, this, this young guy, young ruler, he was grieved, really, because he couldn't give where his heart wasn't. See, it takes faith to live in the kingdom. Now, when he's saying, uh, uh, now some folks used to just mess this scripture up, saying that's why rich folk can't go to heaven. We ain't talking about heaven. The kingdom of God is not heaven. The kingdom of God is God's system. You know, so we're not, talk we're not talking about a person uh, going to heaven. Whenever you see in the scripture kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, it's not talking about a person going to heaven. It's talking about God's system. All right? So now, it takes faith to live in the kingdom of God. In other words, it takes faith to trust God 
as your only source. And this is really what was going on with Jesus and, and, and this, this young ruler. You see, it's important to, to always remember, and I've said this for years, God doesn't want our money because he don't need it. God does not need our money, but he needs your heart. See, that's the difference. He don't need your money, but he needs your heart. That's even why Jesus uh, said in Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In other words, if you can locate where a person spends all or spends the most at, that's really where their heart is. See, if you want to find out where a person's heart is really at, just find out what they spend the most in or at. That's where a person's heart is. Wherever a person spends all of the majority of, 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 of their time, their energies, their abilities, their efforts, and all of that, that is where their heart is. See, because if you really get a person's heart, then everything else is going to come with it. You know, if, if you get a person's heart, everything else comes with it, you know. So faith and giving, they go together because they're both an issue of the heart. Now this, this uh, young ruler, really his heart, his heart, really, and I'm not coming against him because he represents a lot of folk. You know, he was a good guy. But his heart really wouldn't allow him to trust in the kingdom of God. You know, he didn't have enough faith to connect into what Jesus asked him to do. Because if you notice here, you know, he, he's the one that came to Jesus and, and, and he's saying, what, 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 what should I do to, to in, 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 may have, inherit eternal life? Now he's to saying one thing, now Jesus is talking about, okay, I, uh, you know the commandments, such so, he said, I've done all that. But this the one thing you lack in here is your trust. Now, now, see, Jesus didn't say that, but he gives them a test. This is what you do. Go and uh, 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 what you have, give to the poor, you know, and, 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 and when he means give to the poor, he, he was, Jesus wasn't saying just go find poor people. It was more or less because the ministry of Jesus was given to the poor. We understand that. See, so he was more or less saying, listen, uh, 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 what you have, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and take up, cross and take up the cross and follow me. Now, he wasn't telling the, the rich young ruler to, to just be bankrupt. See, because one of the things you got to remember, when you're rich, you have stuff and gold too. You know. See, he's just saying, sell your stuff. He wasn't telling him to empty your gold. When you're rich, you got them both. Some folks got stuff, but they ain't rich. You got stuff, you got bills to keep that stuff going, you know. So he wasn't telling him to, 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 to just totally bankrupt himself, but I do believe this. If that guy, if he would have said, Jesus, I'm going to do that. Jesus answered and said, okay, your heart is red. See, it goes back to, to if you remember, uh, when, when uh, uh, Abraham, God told Abraham to go up the mountain and he was going to use Isaac as a, um, uh, uh, as a sacrifice, it was never the intention for God, for, it was never God's intention for Abraham to kill Isaac. It was never that. You know, because the, the ram in the bush was there. But it was a matter of, Abraham, can I trust you? See, that's why as soon as Abraham did it, say, hey, now I know. It, God, it was never God's intention for Abraham to go up there and kill, and, and kill Isaac. But it was a heart issue. See, that's what I say. God is not after our money. He wants our heart. Hmm. And so this, this rich, rich young ruler, it just revealed his, his heart just wasn't there. And then when Jesus goes on and tells his disciples, uh, uh, how hardly shall 
they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. Instead of, in other words, most folks with riches, their trust is in their stuff. And, and, and if your faith and trust is in your possessions and what you have, that's hard to put some trust in God's way of doing things. You know, that's why he, he said, listen, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle and, and, and at that time a place, uh, it's not actually a camel going through an eye of a needle, but there was a, 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 a place that, uh, that, that in, in the markets, like, uh, it was like doors as such. And, you know, when, when the merchants would come in, they would put everything on the camel's back and they'd go through what was called an eye of a needle. Then when business hours was over, that thing would close. And there's no way the camel, because, you know, a camel has back like that. The camel couldn't go through the eye of the needle. So Jesus just makes that analogy. Listen, it's, it, it, it's, it's easy if a camel could go through the eye of a needle, which is nearly impossible, then somebody who put their faith and trust in the world, then to switch that into my system. All right? Hmm. So now, that's, that, that's kind of how that all works. Uh, faith and giving, they go together. There's no way one can, can really truly live by faith or even uh, have strong faith without being a giver. Now, we've also learned uh, how the kingdom of God operates. Let's go to Mark, the fourth chapter of Mark. Fourth chapter of Mark, verse 26. Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of a mustard seed, which when, when it is sown into the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge unto the shadow of it. Now, once again, and we went over this before, that we know the kingdom of God, it, it, it's, it's God ruled. It's, it's God's way. You know, it's, it's not a democracy. You know, it's no, we don't vote on, you know, you don't vote in the things of God. In the kingdom of God, it's not a democracy. You don't vote. It's God ruled. But it's still faith-based because it really takes faith to believe in the sowing and reaping process. And we know that that is a spiritual law that God injected in the earth when he uh, created everything, you know. In the very beginning, in Genesis 1, when God said, uh, let there be light, that was really the first seed towards the creation. And uh, we said on last time that every time you see God said in that first chapter of Genesis, we could easily say God seeded, okay? Because uh, 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 that was when God said, let there be light, that was the first initial seed towards creation. Now, we learn, too, what does seed have to do with us? In the first, you don't have to turn to it. In the first chapter of Genesis, verse 29, it says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of tree yielding seed, and to you it shall be for meat. And we've said before this word meat means provision. So with that said, we can easily say seed is there to provide any need. And he specifically says here that I've given you every herb bearing seed, not some, but every, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree. Every tree that's on the earth, there's a seed for it. Now, this is not a play with words, but it's important that we, we don't miss that. He's given, he, he says, uh, I have given you every herb, bearing seed, every, which is upon the face of all the earth. All the earth. In other words, this seed principle works in Chicago just like it works in the Bahamas. All the earth. 
See, and I say that because you, you, you can have some people say, uh, you know, certain, certain, you know, certain jobs or certain things is better in this area. That might be a fact, but that's not the truth. All right? So it's not a play with words when he says that uh, every herb and upon the face of all the earth and every tree. So whatever was put on the earth, there's a seed to produce it. Then Genesis 1 and 11 and 12 says, God said, let the earth bring grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree uh, yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the face of the earth. And the earth brought forth grass yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. So in other words, uh, we said that the seed not only produces after its own kind, but whatever the seed is, is what the uh, harvest of the fruit will be. All right? So a seed is the provision for any need that I may have in the earth. A seed is the provision for any need that I may have in the earth. In other words, there's a seed for every tree. If I need a healing tree, there's a seed for it. If I need a deliverance tree, there's a seed for it. If I need a prosperity tree, there's a seed for it. So there's a, a, a seed is the provision for any need that I may have in earth. Whatever need I may have in the earth, there's a seed for it. I may have a need to get some good grades in school. Guess what? There's a seed for it. Amen. See, we've got to understand that. That's why I keep repeating that. Every tree in all the earth, you know, there's a seed for if, if Whatever need you may have in life, in this earth, God made sure that there is a seed for it. Hallelujah. Uh, I remember making this statement years ago. You, if you haven't wrote it down, write it down. Why worry when you can sow? Why worry when you can sow? And this kind of goes in line with what Jesus said in the sixth chapter of Matthew when he said, take no thought, saying, you know, uh, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? You know, uh, I'll add in that. Take no thought saying, how are we going to pay this rent? You know, how are we going to pay these bills? Jesus said, don't, don't even, not only say it, don't even think about it. Don't even take no thought to it. And he goes on in that sixth chapter in Matthew, more or less says the world takes thought to that. The world worries about those things. But he's saying we're not supposed to worry about it. You know, we're not supposed to even give it a thought. Why? Because God already knows that we need it. See, when, when we get that in our system, that God already knows, then it, it eliminates a lot of our, our prayers like we got to remind God of something he already knows. He already knows, as if we got to tell God something like, 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 you know, your rent is doing. God said, it is. I didn't know your light bill was behind. Yeah. He already know you need, you know, even money for that matter. You can't function right in the earth without money. And God knows that. Because in this earth, now in the kingdom of God, it's sowing and reaping, but in the earth is buying and selling. So you can't function here in the earth without any money. Because nothing is free. Now some people say, well, I got some free, somebody else paid for it. I used to think that years ago, what is free? <laughs> Until I got on my own and realized it's not. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he says we don't even have to worry about those things, you know, uh, uh, and God knows we, we need them. But the key is the manifestation of those needs is attached to putting the kingdom first. That's why he said in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom uh, uh, in his righteousness or his way of doing things, 
and then all of these things will be added. So the key to the manifestation of those needs that God already knows uh, is attached to me putting the kingdom first. All right? Now, let's get back into this seed faith. Now, we know all the promises of God. They're received by faith. The promises, they do belong to us, but we know they don't automatically manifest. We also know that uh, even though the harvest, every promise is yours, but harvest can only respond to a seed. Now, that's why I, I read that Mark 4, the kingdom of God works, or you can only compare it to it as if a man sows seed in the ground. Harvest, even though the harvest belongs to you, but harvest only responds to seed. Without a seed, you can't get a harvest. It only responds to a seed. And obviously, in order to get a specific harvest, there has to be a specific seed. You can't get a, a watermelon tree with an apple seed. All right? So even though the harvest, it, it belongs to us, but a uh, harvest only responds to seed. Now, we gave the definition of seed faith, and we said it's directing your seed with a specific purpose, which that makes sense. You know, if I want an apple tree, then I need apple seed. If I want an orange tree, I need orange seed. So it's directing your seed with a specific purpose. It's intentionally sowing a seed to become entitled to the manifestation of God's promise. Now, as, as, as heirs of God, as children of God, the promises do belong to us. But uh, there's something we got to do for the manifestation. Manifestation doesn't just show up. Okay? So it's directing your seed with a specific purpose. It's intentionally sowing a seed to become entitled, not to the promise, but entitled to the manifestation of the promise. It's releasing your faith with the expectation to walk in that promise. It's really the sowing and reaping process. It's really just having uh, faith in a seed to produce a specific need. Then we also said that the sowing and reaping principle, it works all the time because it is a law. Let's go to Galatians 6. Galatians 6. 6 chapter of Galatians, verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Another translation says, for whatever man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. Another translation says, a person will harvest what they plant. Or a man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. A man will always reap just the kind of crop he sows. Uh, voice translation says, make no mistake, God can't be mocked. What you give is what you get. What you sow, you harvest. All right? So that's why we said uh, the laws of sowing and reaping, uh, they work whether you believe it or not because it is a law. Also, too, sowing and giving is basically the same thing. Because when you give, you sow. You know, when you give, you sow. When you sow, you're giving. So it's, it's basically the same thing. When, when I'm giving, I'm sowing. When I'm sowing, I'm giving. Now, we all know the uh, benefits of giving. We know that not only does God love a cheerful giver, but the release of receiving is attached to the release of giving. All right? The release of receiving is attached to the release of giving. All right? And a perfect uh, scripture for that is what Jesus said in Luke 6:38: Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And obviously, this verse is the law of sowing and reaping again, but it also lets us know that the return will always be more than the initial gift. 
See, when we really get this, it's, it's really exciting. That's what it's saying. To every need you have, there's a seed to it. You know. And the harvest is always bigger than the seed. The return is going to always be more than the initial gift. In other words, you're going to always end up with more than what you started with. See, that's one of the scriptures I use in faith, that if the Lord tarries, the older I get, I'm going to have more than what I started. See, now the world got it backwards. See, the world got it backwards. You work 30 years, 40 years, whatever, retire, get that little pension, then you get older, get your Social Security, and so on and so on. And you're kind of struggling to try to make ends meet. And if you've been smart, if you had a house, you finally paid it off. What is that? Uh-oh, I lost somebody on that. No, 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 no. They, that's the world's way. See, when, when, when we are sowers and givers, see, remember, we're to, we're to end up with more than what we started with. That's how it's supposed to be. Well, I am. Somebody say, me too. I ain't going out on the bottom. I'm going out in the overflow. Amen. See, that's why I don't get alarmed at, at a lot of stuff that's happening in the system with the government and this and that. They cutting this program. I don't get caught up into that. Can't get caught up into that. Amen. Now, so the release of receiving is attached to the release of giving. And that's based on uh, Luke 638. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We also said without the initiation of the principle, there can't be a manifestation of the promise. Now, a lot of folk, they want the promise, but they don't want the principle. You know, so you can't get the uh, manifestation of the promise until you initiate the principle. And the principle is giving. Amen. Nobody's giving unto you good magic. Press down, shaking the gut. Nobody, that ain't happening. See, when somebody give you something you did nothing, you know what that is? A beggar. Ouch. Now, before somebody choke and lose their hair, what you say, Father, the people give it? Maybe because you're a giver and you expect, you know, things to come back to you. But for any person to expect someone never put nothing out like that, and people who get it, that's a beggar. I ain't say you wasn't saved. I wouldn't dare say that. That's between you and your God. But 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 to to expect a harvest or expect the return and never initiate it a principle, you are a beggar. That's what beggars do. That, that, now that's getting into a whole different lesson. That's what that, that, what we call that sense of entitlement. That's a beggar mentality. Ibo Boshando. You know. See, I expect men to give unto my bosom because I'm a giver. See, there's, there's no such thing. See, th th there's no such thing as coincidence. Or, or I got this by chance. All I have, I got it by choice because I initiate the principles. See, that's why I can sleep well at night. Nobody's in my back pocket and I'm not in nobody else's. I don't owe you, you don't owe me. You know. It's even, see, and that's even part of, 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 of favor is a part of that. You know, and, and I still get, get excited about when favor come and this and that, but, but I realize that's part of it because I'm a sower. And favor comes back. Amen. 
So without the initiation of the principle, there can't be a manifestation of the promise. Then also we learn that your potential harvest is already in the earth. You know. Now we, we know that even reading through Genesis. You know, the manifested blessings, they generally come through the hands of, of men. Why? Because if my seed comes through my hand, then the release of my harvest can come through the hands of men. That's why Jesus said, men shall give unto your bosom. You know, the seed comes through my hand, you know, whatever that seed may be, and that harvest is coming through the hands of men. See, that, that's how it works. It comes through my hand, then that harvest is coming through the hands of men. Because notice he said, uh, uh, you give. It'll be given on you, good measure, press down, shaking together, shall men. He didn't even say shall man. Man is singular. He said men, plural. Why? Because the harvest is always bigger than the seed. See, that will almost be equal, equal. If I man, I give out, and then man give unto me. He said men. To make sure that harvest is bigger than the seed. See, now y'all may think it's a play with words, but, the, but hey, it's not a play with words. There's a difference in a man giving you something and men giving you something. All right? So now, my hands, if, if, if my seed comes, or seed offering comes through my hand, then the release of my harvest can come through the hands of men. All right? Uh, also, too, one of the things about seed faith giving we said one of the great things about it is it's not limited to finances. You know, that's one of the great things. It's not limited to that because everybody may not need finance. You, you might have a rich man, one of the richest people in the world, they get sick. And money can't get you healed. Richest person in the world, they, they might de be depressed. And I don't care how much Prozac and ma medicine and all stuff you take. It can't get you healed. Because we know medicine only works on the symptoms. Medicine does not heal. So, so everybody may not have a need of finances. And that's the great thing about seed faith. You know, uh, you may need healing, deliverance. You know, you might need some wisdom. You know, you might need some peace or, 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 or whatever it is. You know, God said in Genesis, I've given you a seed for provision. So it's not just limited uh, to material things. You know, that's why I said earlier, you know, I might may be in school and I need some good grades. So there's a seed for me to get some good grades. Mm. Now, what would be the simplest way in uh, executing the seed faith giving principle. First of all, if, if, if the simplest way that if I'm going to do step by step, first of all, I need a written word with a promise. In other words, um, uh, I need uh, 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 I need to know what does God say about my situation. You know. Uh, whatever my need is, uh, what does the word say? You know, I need the word really to stand in faith. So that's the first initial thing that uh, as I'm executing this seed faith giving principle. I need the word. See, the word is my initial seed. Because Jesus said that, you know, the seed is the word of God. The word is the seed. So, so, I, so, I, so I, 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 need, I, I need the word. Now, let's just say my need is some wisdom. I need some wisdom about a situation. So now, if that's the case, then uh, uh, my written promise would be James 1 and 5. If any lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth uh, to all men liberally, and it shall be given to him, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. So now if I have a need for wisdom, I need some wisdom, 
then my, 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 my first act is, is getting that written word, you know, getting the, what, what, what I, I need the promise. Because without the word, I can't get any, any faith for it. So now, okay, I know it's the will of God that if, if I lack wisdom, I ask him. He gives it to me, and, uh, and I ask in faith. You know, nothing wavering. Now, I'm going to exercise my faith, next thing, by asking God on the seed I need to sow. All right? You know. So I'm, I'm asking God on the seed I need to sow uh, because my obedience to what he tells me is what really puts me in faith. Because we know faith doesn't actually officially starts until you've obeyed the instruction. Because faith without a corresponding action or faith without uh, obedience to back it up is dead. All right? So now uh, I, I get the word, find out what he says. You know, I know that that's a promise. That's my initial seed, you know, and get my faith going. And then I ask God on what, 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 what the, what's the seed, seed I need to sow. And then it's my obedience that put me in the faith zone. Now, there are several reasons why it's important to seek God uh, for the amount and the direction of the seed. All right? Let's go to Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11. Eleventh chapter of Ecclesiastes, uh, verse one says, "Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth, and if the tree falls toward the south, toward the north." In the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with her child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whither shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Now, if you look back at verse 5, as thou knowest not the way of, of the Spirit, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. One translation says it this way, that you don't know the way of the Spirit, but God is the one who makes everything happen. You know. So that's a, 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 a key thing where I have to ask God, uh, what, 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 what do you want me to sow, and what's the direction? You know, and what do I mean direction? Sometimes God, God may say, uh, I, I want you to sow such and such. Uh, and I, now, I don't know, but I'm just using this example because this has happened to me countless times. Where he said, I want you to sow this, give this to the ministry, and then give this to the man of God. He told me that, I, I can't count how many times. Now, don't nobody, I'm just saying this example. Don't, don't nobody say Direction. You know. And, 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 and there are times he say when to do it. You know, he say, I want you to do such and such, such at, at this time. I've even got, when well, the Lord's given me specific things, put it in an envelope. Or depending on what, you know, just, just different types of things. Uh, there's been times all cash, not a check, not a money order, just cash. You know, so that's very important to, to, uh, uh, to understand that. So it says that thou knowest not what is the, the way of the spirit. In other words, God knows because he's the one that, that makes all of this happen. All right. Then another reason for seeking God and giving you don't have to turn to it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. And we know acknowledge him means don't do anything until he tells you. 
Acknowledge doesn't mean after you made a decision and look for God to bless it. So that's what a lot of people do. They make decisions and then they, they want God to bless it. Now, acknowledging God is before I make this decision, Lord, you tell me what to do. And I know we have that backwards sometimes. You know, I acknowledge God in everything. Yeah, after you did. I acknowledge him in my job. Did you ask him, should you take it? No, I, no, I ain't coming against nobody. I'm just making a point with that. All right? Then next thing, uh, according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 10, God is the one who provides seed to the sower. And we'll get into that in just a minute. And multiplies the seed sown. And then according to Matthew 9, 38, uh, he is the Lord of the harvest. Okay? So, so th those are some uh, reasons uh, first thing I'm going to do, the simplest way, executing this seed faith giving, first I, I need a written word. I need a written promise. In other words, what does the word say about my need? You know, if, it, if it's his wisdom or if it's finances, if it's healing, if it's deliverance, uh, uh, wh whatever it is. You know, see, see like I say, we don't want to just limit things uh, to money or things. I might, I might be lacking love. You know, and we know there are plenty of, of scriptures on how you're supposed to love. I may be having a hard time forgiving somebody. And we know there are plenty of scriptures on you're supposed to forgive. You know, seriously. Now, trust me, now, when I'm telling you that these are some areas I had to go into, and I'm the reverend. You all know, know some of my story. You know, I've been stabbed in the back over these nearly 20 years by people who love me. And there have been times in my flesh it was hard to get past. You know, so everything is not just about material things, but then you, 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 get, you get that seed, get that word, okay, all right, I got to forgive, I got to love, I got to bless, I got to whatever, and then hear God on what to sow that seed and whatever. This, 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 is, my, this is my forgiving seed. Now, my flesh don't want to forgive, don't want to do it, but it ain't got nothing to do with that. This is my seed. I, I need more love in me. You know, some of you might need, I, I, need, I need some more joy. I'm just so unhappy. Just, I just, I'm just not a happy camper. <laughs> I need a happy seed. I need a, how to get along with people's seed. Seriously. See, that's the power of the seed. Whatever the need is, there's a seed for it. You know, it can go with anything. I need to love my wife more. I need to love my husband more. I need to love my kids. I need to love my parents more. I need whatever. There's a seed for every need. All right? So I get that word, then, then, then ask God what, what it is to, 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 to do, and, 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 uh, and, and then as he tell me, then I obey it. Now, now I'm in faith. Now I have a right to, to walk in the manifestation of whatever that need is. All right? So that's the, that's the most simplest way to operate that. Whenever there's a need, and that's one of the first things that comes to my mind, whenever there's a need of something. Lord, I know first that I need seed. And, it's, and it begins with the word first. You know, ain't no sense you you sowing no money and you ain't got no faith with it. You know, and, and sometimes people just do stuff to be doing it. But that's why I always ask a person, whatever you're in faith for, what, what is your foundation of the word? Pastor, I'm believing God for this property. All right, where's the scripture at? I don't know. I'm just going off what the prophet told me. no. Where's the scripture? See, because you can't get faith for something if you don't know God said it or not. Now, you can have a lot of hope and positivity, but hope and positivity is not faith. And that's what anything, anything you trying to believe God for, what is the foundation scripture of it? What is it? What, is, what, are, what are you standing on? What is your, what, what, how did you get faith for what you're trying to believe for? 
Now, I'm saying that for a reason. And, and, I, I'm, and I'm all for the prophetic word. Don't misunderstand me. See, and I've gotten a, quite a, over the years people giving prophetic word, but they got to line up with this. Don't give me no prophetic word, and I, you know, I, I need to find it. You know, yay, I say, I, I see you in a big white car. I mean, I, yay, I say, I need to find where a big white car is. See, because you can't go just go off of a, it, it don't work like that. Because then time go on and you ain't seen big white, white car. And then you get in your flesh. See, they was a lying prophet. No. What is the foundation of what you believe in for? All right. So after I do that, then I get into the, the ask God for what to do. So it then and, and have the expectation to walk in that promise. Now, let me close with this. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. I'm going to wrap it up. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter. And I close with this last passage. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Let's read verse 6. These are familiar passages. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, this righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth uh, through us thanksgiving to God. Now, one of the things, and we said this before, one of the wonderful things about seed faith giving is I can determine the quantity of my harvest. Because that's really what verse 6 is all about. He, uh, uh, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, but he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now this sparing, remember, this is not there to show us that little sowing means little harvest. Now that's what some people think, well, I ain't ready to do no bountiful. I'm going to do a sparingly harvest. If I just a little seed, I get a little harvest. That's not there for that because this word sparingly in the Greek, it literally means withholding all but a little. See, when you sparingly giving, first of all, you're not cheerful because it's an on purpose act. So sparingly does not mean uh, I'm just little C because no, 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 no. You really don't want to do it. And you're going to get a harvest with that. And that harvest is going to be a, 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 a resistant harvest. See, and, and usually like that, you don't enjoy that. See, because you didn't really want to give, and you're going to get a harvest that didn't want to really get released, and you ain't going to really enjoy it. See, because the law works. When you sow, you reap. You know. So uh, uh, when you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. And then there's, there's, it's, it's like you're going to reap it, but there's no fulfillment. It's like, oh, it's like what happened? You know, something missed it. There's no fulfillment in it, okay? So now we don't use this as, as little, little sowing means a uh, little harvest, you know. But uh, uh, I, I, I can determine uh, my harvest by my seed, you know. So if I need a bountiful harvest, then all I've got to do is have a bountiful seed. Now, the bountiful seed, that's dependent on you. You know, what, what, what's bountiful for me may not be bountiful for you. So there's no such thing as a certain amount that's bountiful. Because that, that depends on, 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 on different people. You know. Now, in, in, in many of our eyesight, $50,000 could be a bountiful seed. But to somebody who got $50 million, that ain't even a drop in the bucket. 
And I found out folks who really, really got tons of money, they don't even give on that level no way. They can't, they can't comprehend that. No, that's, this is real life on that. They can't. They can't. You don't find anybody really rich giving no $20,000 contribution. To 50, they, don't, they, don't, they can't comprehend that. It's got to be six figures or more or seven. They don't do that. You know, e even years ago, if you try to apply for grants and certain things, certain people, they, 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 especially fo foundations with tons of money, you can't get no, no, I just want a $15,000 grant. No, you ain't the one. We looking for somebody who need a $500,000 grant. Okay? So it's no such thing as a, uh, 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 you, you know, a certain amount that means that. You know what's bountiful to you. I mean, you know. You know, because when it's like that, it means something to you. You, you know. That goes into that scripture, I think, in is it Psalms 126, when you sow in tears, you reap in joy. You know. Like, man. See, the bountiful seeds, you never forget. You like, it, it's kind of like when it's bountiful, it's kind of like, boy, this harvest stuff got to work. Because if not, this thing could put me six months or a year behind or put me outdoors. All right, so there's no such thing as big. I don't want anybody to ever think that big amount, little amount. It, it's all fair to everybody, just like the tithe. There, there's no such thing as a big tithe or little tithe. And I know that I've seen churches there, oh, the big tithe is over here. That, that doesn't exist in the kingdom. No such thing as big tithe or little tithe. It's up to the individual. Remember when, when, all, when Jesus, when they were standing there taking off the offerings and, uh, and said all the rich people, they gave out, gave out of their abundance. They were dropping in a lot of money. Then here comes this widow drops in two mice. And Jesus tells the disciples she gave more than all of them. You know. So there's no such thing as that. Now also, let me say what I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's okay to drop two mites in the bucket when you got $200. See, sometimes I, I, I've been in this long enough because, see, you can say one thing and folks will run with, see, that's what then I got to say what I'm not saying. So don't nobody think, of, that's why I dropped two mites in and you got $200. No. Then if we look at uh, uh, verse 7, every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Now, obviously, a giver is one who practices giving. You know, it's just like a doctor is one who practices medicine. An attorney or a lawyer is one who practices uh, the law, you know. So it, it's kind of, it's more of, of who you are than what you do. You know, it, it, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's not just a career, but it's a calling. See, a, a giver's mission is to give. All right? See, because when it talks about soul or that's not talking about one that just, so, th this is what you practice doing. A giver is not one who gives every now and then. They practice giving. Okay? A giver gets fulfillment when they give. I'll take it a step further. Uh, it would be a challenge for a giver to not give when an opportunity to give comes up. In other words, if you can easily not give when an opportunity to give comes up, you're not a giver. See, like I said, we're talking about givers and sowers. We ain't talking about folks who just every now and then. You know. You know, this is something that, this, this, this is what you do. This is who you are. You know. All right. Um, now, a cheerful giver, what, what does cheerful mean? Cheerful means full of cheer, happy, joyful, generous. Having a happy disposition. That's why it talks about never doing it grudgingly. And I've been there before. I've given grudgingly at times. I just didn't want to do it. 
you know, I've shared this story before. Those of you who never heard it, uh, this was um, probably a year. It had to be maybe a year after we came into this to, to this place. You know, we were in the midst of doing work. We hadn't even moved in this part yet, because they were doing the work, and we were over in the in the kitchen area with the service. And I remember uh, at that time I preached somewhere, and uh, and uh, I got a pretty nice honorarium. Like this is about four, uh, yeah, about 14 years ago. And uh, uh, I don't even know, well, I'm, I'm sure the South folks were here, but I don't know if you all remember that. And we needed to do something, and uh, uh, we kind of took up the offering back there in the dining room, and I got a few promises for some people. No, nobody here. They don't go here anymore, so nobody be looking like. And they didn't honor what they said. And we needed the, the money to keep some work going on, so... You know, I hadn't even cashed my honorarium check. I preached the previous day, and I gave it. Did I give it cheerful? Nope. I gave it grudging, because I was mad. I'm just, I, I just got to show you our real life experiences sometimes. On, 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 you, you can't, that's why the scripture, you don't do it grudging, because you can give grudgingly. I ain't getting no, 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 no return off that. This was a decent honorary, especially before 15, 14 years ago. And I could have used it. I had no intention of giving that up. Amen. You know, but I did it grudging. You know, plus it was of necessity in, in the script we just read. You don't do it of necessity either, but it was done grudging. And I had to repent about it and, 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 and all of that, you know. So he's saying, he's saying, don't, 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 don't do that. God loves the, the cheerful giver. All right? One who happy, joyful, happy disposition. You know, a cheerful giver gives on purpose. See, when you do something on purpose, it, it's, it's, it, it's not accidental, but it's deliberate. See, when you're a giver, when you're a sower, it's done on purpose. In other words, it's totally controlled. It's a, it's a controlled, conscious decision. See, that's like you know you, you are a sower. And I know many are coming into that. You know you are a sower when, and I just use here locally. It doesn't matter. Sunday was a few days ago. But, 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 but you're already thinking about what you're going to do Wednesday. Now, if you ain't thinking, I ain't coming against you. You, you haven't come there yet. You, you, you're coming into it. And yet this Wednesday, our next day, will be in a few days, Sunday, then you be thinking about that too because it's a controlled, conscious effort because that's what you do. If I'm on the road, if I go to different churches, whatever, I, I may have left my checkbook a couple times in, in a lifetime somewhere going somewhere. Because it's a conscious effort. Wherever I'm going somewhere. For one of the reasons I never want to leave my check, because I want to hear God. Because I constantly need a harvest. Now I say that because I know some folk who, who, who purposely leave their money at home. Then somebody asks them, you say, I ain't got it. You're not lying. You're right. You don't have it on you. So the cheerful giver gives on purpose. It's a decision from the heart. You know. Uh, let's see. Let me really, 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 really wrap this up. Let, let's, let's, let's. Uh, let's see. So God loves the cheerful giver. Let him give, not a grudge. Him. And then now the promise to that is in verse 8. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. In the Amplified Bible, it says, God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing, come to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstance, and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, possessing of enough to require no aid or support, and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. The expanded Bible to that verse says, 
and God can give you more blessings than you need, then you will always have plenty of everything in all things at all times. You will have all you need enough to give to abounding, overflowing in every good work. Then the voice translation says, God is ready to overwhelm you with more blessings than you can ever imagine so that you'll always be taken care of in every way and you'll have more than enough to share. So in essence, God not only loves the cheerful giver, but the cheerful giver is blessed. See, the seed is here to, to meet every need. Whatever the need is, there's the seed there. See, that's why you, you can say, when you, when you become a soul like that and you understand the power of the seed, there are certain things in life you'll never go back to. You know, and I ain't coming against, no, no, but, but there are certain things in life I will never, ever go back to. Because whenever need comes up, I understand the power of a seed. See, I can't go back to welfare, never again. I don't care what happens. I'm just making a point. I ain't coming against nobody. Never. 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 Now, I say this, and this is a broad statement. I know I'm on TV. Every pastor eventually is supposed to be in full-time ministry. Has the temptation been over there in the last 20 years? Yeah. But see, I understand the power of seed. I can't go back to the field anymore. No matter what happens. All right? Write this down you'll have enough divine provision to complete a divine assignment. You'll have enough divine provision to complete a divine assignment. Now, I end with this last verse, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. It says, Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And the Amplified Bible says, And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also multiply or also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity. The ERV says God is the one who plants or who gives seed to those who plant. So in other words, when you purpose in your heart for, for a seed, it says God will minister. In other words, he'll give you the plan to get it. See, when you purpose in your heart to, and I'm giving an example, you purpose in your heart, I want, I want to sow a seed of, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it up. I want to sow a seed of $10 on Sunday. See, when you are so, God will minister to you and he'll give you a plan to get it. He'll give you a plan to get it. Then another thing in this verse is God gives you the assurance that while you're gathering the seed in, he'll make sure that you have food to eat. Now, this is important because it kind of goes into when, 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 you, when you make vows and different things like that. And if you make a vow, Lord, I want to sow this seed, such and such. Okay, while I'm, while, I'm, I'm, while I'm gathering in the seed, then God promises that he'll make sure that I have food to eat so I don't have to touch the seed I'm trying to gather in. See, if you don't know that, while you're trying to gather in the seed, now you're hungry then you're going to pull the seed. So that's why he, he, he says here that uh, in the Amplified Bible, God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating. Okay? So now he, he promises to provide the, the seed, but also food to eat. Same God who provides the seed will also provide food to eat. And that's why I say, and when you don't know that, you'll, you'll keep eating your seed. And I've been there. 
you know, I, I've, I've, I've been there. At times, I, especially if I made a vow to the Lord or certain things and I want to sow this to that, and, 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 and then, then I need some food. And when I mean food, I don't necessarily mean hot dogs and cakes. Calm air need to be fed. People's gas need to be fed. The rent man need to see. And if you don't know that, then you'll pull from the seed bin for the food. So that's why he gets, anybody feel me on that? I've been there, y'all. But see, when you don't know that, you'll do that. And that's why the same God, is he, if he's going to provide the seed while I'm gathering in the seed, same God is going to take care of the food. See, see, there is no harvest yet. It, it's, that's just an additional promise. If I purpose in my heart for this seed while I'm gathering the seed, he promised to make sure that I'm fed. Because remember, he loves the cheerful giver. You know, because God wants me to get that harvest. See, I can't get that harvest if I mess up the seed. So in order for me to not mess with the seed, then he makes the promise, listen, I'm going to provide the food so you don't be tempted to go into the seed bin. You all, you all understand that? All right. See, as I said, when you don't know that, you'll keep eating the seed. And without the seed, you can't sow and receive the harvest. See, if you keep thinking about the food, you'll never be able to set aside the seed. You don't have to turn to it, but we read it in Ecclesiastes 10. I mean, Ecclesiastes 11, just make note of it. 11 and 4, he says, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. One of the reasons a lot of folk don't sow is it's just not a good time to. See, as long as you keep observing, I want to do it, but I just can't yet. You know, I got these bills. I just can't. I want to, but I, see, once, I'm, once I get these bills kind of caught up, then, Pastor, I'm going to help with the building fund. And I know you mean well, and you love God. But that's why he said, listen, when you observe the wind, see, you keep observing what's going on around you, you'll never sow. And the enemy will make sure of that because you know the enemy will, will give us a thousand and one reasons why you can't. Now you can have the typical five bills, your rent, your utilities, and if you got a car note, and I was going to say credit card, but you behind like that, most folks ain't paying no credit card. <laughs> Been there, I understand you, you know. So basically a few things in there, but the enemy will give you a thousand and one. See, you dealing with five, he'll give you five, five more, 15 more stuff that, that you know you don't, you know you got the credit card. You weren't paying in no way. <laughs> you know your old Uncle Charlie 20, now you weren't paying Uncle Charlie this week. See, he'll give you a thousand and one reason why you can't do it. Mm. Now I end with this. Could it be the reason some of us have not seen the harvest we want is because we've never sown the whole seed. Because maybe we've been eating food from off the seed. Hmm. See, we don't have to eat the seed. The food will be there. While we're gathering in the seed, if I can believe God to provide the seed, because he does provide seed to the sower. Now, if you're not a sower, then he's not obligated to provide seed. Now, I've said this for years with people, and some folks say, well, as if I had more. No, 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 no. That's a promise. He said, I'll provide seed to the sower. See, when you're a sower, God will always make sure you have seed. Always. And, and now, I'm going to take it a step further, and I'm going to end this. You could be in a position where you may not have money. But see, if you a sower, God will provide seed. Your seed may, can only be at this time, your time. Pastor, I, I don't have money seed. 
but God will provide me some time. Sow my time into the ministry. And I be coming to church late all the time. Be the first one at prayer. Last one to leave. I may not have the money, but I can sow my time. See, it's not all about monetary things. You know, I can sow my gift. Somebody told me, boy, I, I wash dishes real good. We just had a women's conference with a couple hundred dishes. So my time. Speaking of time, I'm out of time. God bless everybody. We'll see you this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday is Father's Day. We'll see you then. Come on, let's thank God.